Good morning. Welcome to worship today. How many of you were or had relatives involved with prom last night? See a few hands, that's really good. Sounds like uh, people had a good time, and uh, it's one other of the rites of passage that's done for this year. Radio broadcast this morning is of this week's service is in memory of Dennis Shy from Janice and family. Thank you for sharing the gift of this service with the community in this way. Our prayer list this week includes Jim Harner, Walter Toftelin, and Brett Swenson. We also remember Audrey Jordan Nath and her parents. She was baptized here last week. I also bring you the news of the death of Stan Guyberg. His funeral will be here tomorrow at 1030. Visitation is this afternoon from 2 till 5 at Harquist's. So we keep his family and friends in our prayers as well. Bunch of stuff to highlight uh, event-wise for the month of May. Check out the glimpse for information on music practices for next week, Mother's Day. On May 15th, the ministries will be meeting in the afternoon starting at 2 o'clock. Look, look for your mail for more information. But if you are a newly elected ministry member or continuing on a ministry, put this date on your calendar. And May 22nd is Senior Sunday, where we will recognize our high school seniors. Next week is the final Sunday school uh, session for the year. We have many wonderful people who help our children discover the love of God and the stories of our faith. They're faithful in preparing lessons, showing up, and working with our children weekly. Uh, Sunday school teachers, assistants, music leaders, anyone else who is involved with Sunday school, would you please stand? And there are many, many more. Let's give these folks a round of applause and thanks for what they do to help our children. Take your glimpse home so you know what's going on at Grace and so you can keep the people and events that are happening here in your thoughts and prayers throughout the week. I would invite you to rise as you are able. The peace of the Lord be with you. I would invite you to share that peace with one another.
worship this morning as always in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. We continue with our confession and forgiveness. God of mercy and consolation, come to the help of your people, turning us from our sin to live for you alone. Give us the power of your Holy Spirit that we may confess our sin, receive your forgiveness, and grow into the fullness of Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Let us confess our sin in the presence of God and of one another. Most merciful God, we confess that we are captive to sin and cannot free ourselves. We have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us. Forgive us, renew us, and lead us, so that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your holy name. Amen. In the mercy of Almighty God, Jesus Christ was given to die for us, and for his sake, God forgives us all our sins. As a called and ordained minister of the Church of Christ and by his authority, I therefore declare to you the entire forgiveness of all your sins. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. You may be seated. Let us pray together the prayer of the day. 
O eternal and all-merciful God, with all the angels and all the saints, we laud your majesty and might. By the resurrection of your Son, show yourself to us and inspire us to follow Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Our first reading this morning is from Acts chapter 9, verses 1 through 20. Paul, still breathing threats and murder against the disciples of the Lord, went to the high priest and asked him for letters to the synagogues at Damascus, so that if he found any who belonged to the way, men or women, he might bring them bound to Jerusalem. Now, as he was going along and approaching Damascus, suddenly a light from heaven flashed around him. He fell to the ground and heard a voice saying to him, Saul, Saul, why do you persecute me? He asked, Who are you, Lord? The reply came, I am Jesus whom you are persecuting, but Get up and enter the city, and you will be told what you are to do. The men who were traveling with him stood speechless because they heard the voice but saw no one. Saul got up from the ground, and though his eyes were open, he could see nothing. 
So they led him by the hand and brought him into Damascus. For three days he was without sight, and neither ate nor drank. Now there was a disciple in Damascus named Ananias. The Lord said to him in a vision, Ananias, he answered, Here I am, Lord. The Lord said to him, Get up and go to the street called Straight. And at that house of Judas, look for a man of Tarsus named Saul. At this moment, he is praying and has seen a vision, a man named Ananias. Come in and lay his hands on him so that he might regain his sight. But Ananias answered, Lord, I have heard from many about this man, how much evil he has done to your saints in Jerusalem. And here he has authority from the chief priests to bind all who invoke your name. But the Lord said to him, Go, for he is an instrument whom I have chosen to bring my name before Gentiles and kings and before the people of Israel. I myself will show him how much he must suffer for the sake of my name. So Ananias went and entered the house. He laid his hands on Saul and said, Brother Saul, the Lord Jesus who appeared to you on your way here has sent me so that you may regain your sight and be filled with the Holy Spirit. And immediately something like scales fell from his eyes and his sight was restored. Then he got up and was baptized. And after taking some food, he regained, he regained his strength. For several days, he was with the disciples in Damascus, and immediately he began to proclaim Jesus in the synagogues, saying, He is the Son of God. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Our psalm for today is Psalm 30. Let us read responsively. I will extol you, O Lord, for you have drawn me up and did not let my foes rejoice over me. O Lord, my God, I cried to you for help, and you have healed me. O Lord, you brought up my soul from the shill. Uh, restore me to life from among those who had gone down to the pit. Sing praises to the Lord, O you faithful ones, and give thanks to his holy name. For his anger is but for a moment. His favor is for a lifetime. Weeping may linger for the night, but joy comes in the morning. As for me, I said in my prosperity, I shall never be moved. By your favor, O Lord, you had established me as a strong mountain. You hid your face. I was dismayed. To you, O Lord, I cried. And to the Lord I made supplication. What profit is there in my death if I go down to the pit? Will the dust praise you? Will it tell of your faithfulness? Hear, O Lord, and be gracious to me. O Lord, be my helper. You have turned my mourning into dancing. You have taken off my sackcloth and clothed me with joy so that my soul may raise to you and not be silent. O Lord my God, I will give thanks to you forever. Our second reading is from Revelation chapter 5, verses 11 through 14. Then I looked, and I heard the voice of many angels surrounding the throne and the living creatures and the elders. They numbered myriads of myriads and thousands of thousands, singing with a full voice. Worthy is the lamb that was slaughtered to receive power and wealth, wisdom and might, and honor and glory and blessing. Then I heard every creature in heaven and on earth and under the earth and in the sea and all that is in them singing to the one seated on the throne and to the lamb. Be blessing and honor and glory and might forever and ever. 
And the four living creatures said, Amen. And the elders fell down and worshipped. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Please rise for the reading of the Holy Gospel. Our gospel for this morning comes from John, the 21st chapter. After Jesus appeared to his followers in Jerusalem, he himself showed himself again to the disciples by the Sea of Tiberias, and he showed himself in this way. Gathered there together were Simon Peter, Thomas, called the twin, Nathaniel of Cana in Galilee, the sons of Zebedee, and two others of his disciples. Simon Peter said to them, I am going fishing. They said to him, we will go with you. They went out and got into the boat, but that night they caught nothing. Just after daybreak, Jesus stood on the beach, but his disciples did not know that it was Jesus. Jesus said to them, Children, you have no fish, have you? They answered him, No. He said to them, Cast the net to the right side of the boat, and you will find some. So they cast it, and now they were not able to haul it in because there were so many fish. That disciple whom Jesus loved said to Peter, It is the Lord. When Simon Peter heard that it was the Lord, he put on some clothes, for he was naked, and jumped into the sea. But the other disciples came in the boat, dragging the net full of fish, for they were not far from the land, only about a hundred yards off. When they had gone ashore, they saw a charcoal fire there with fish on it and bread. Jesus said to them, Bring some of the fish that you have just caught. So Simon Peter went aboard and hauled the net ashore, full of large fish, a hundred and fifty-three of them, And though there were so many, the net was not torn. Jesus said to them, Come and have breakfast. Now none of the disciples dared to ask him, Who are you? Because they knew it was the Lord. Jesus came and took the bread and gave it to them and did the same with the fish. This was now the third time that Jesus appeared to the disciples after he was raised from the dead. When they had finished breakfast, Jesus said to Simon Peter, Simon, son of John, do you love me more than these? He said to him, Yes, Lord, you know that I love you. Jesus said to him, Feed my lambs. A second time he said to him, Simon, son of John, do you love me? He said to him, Yes, Lord, you know that I love you. Jesus said to him, Tend my sheep. He said to him the third time, Simon, son of John, do you love me? Peter felt hurt because he said to him the third time, Do you love me? And he said to him, Lord, you know everything. You know that I love you. Jesus said to him, Feed my sheep. Very truly I tell you, when you were younger, you used to fasten your own belt and go wherever you wished. But, now, but when you grow old, you will stretch out your hands, and someone else will fashion, fasten a belt around you and take you where you do not want, wish to go. He said this to indicate the kind of death by which he would glorify God. After this, he said to him, Follow me. This is the gospel of the Lord. You may be seated, and I would invite the children to come forward for children's message.
guys will want to turn around so you can see me because I'm over here today. And if you want to sit on the step, that's fine because I have a book for you today. This is a book that you probably have seen. Green Eggs and Ham. How many of you guys know this book? Yeah. It's a good book. It's by Dr. Seuss. I am Sam. Sam I am. That Sam I am, that Sam I am, I do not like that Sam I am. Do you like green eggs and ham? I do not like them, Sam I am. I do not like green eggs and ham. Would you like them here or there? I would not like them here or there. I would not like them anywhere. I do not like green eggs and ham. I do not like them, Sam I am. Do you guys like green eggs and ham? No. I don't know what that is. That's a good, good answer. Would you like them in a house? Would you like them with a mouse? I do not like them in a house. I do not like them with a mouse. I do not like them here or there. I do not like them anywhere. I do not like green eggs and ham. I do not like them, Sam I am. Would you eat them in a box? Would you eat them with a fox? What do you think he says? Not in a box, not with a fox, not in a house, not with a mouse. I would not eat them, Sam, a here or there. I would not eat them anywhere. I would not eat them, eat green eggs and ham. I do not like them, Sam, I am. Would you, could you, in a car? Eat them, eat them, here they are. I would not, could not, in a car. You may like them, you will see. You will like them in a tree. I would not, could not, in a tree, not in a car. You let me be. I do not like them in a box. I do not like them with a fox. I do not like them in a house. I do not like them with a mouse. I do not like them here or there. I do not like them anywhere. I do not like green eggs and ham. I do not like them, Sam I am. A train, a train, a train, a train. Would you, could you, on a train? What does he say? No. No, not on a train, not in a tree, not in a car. Sam, let me be. I would not, could not, in a box. I could not, would not, with a fox. I will not eat them with a mouse. I will not eat them in a house. I will not eat them here or there. I will not eat them anywhere. I do not like green eggs and ham. I do not like them, Sam I am. Say, in the dark? Here in the dark. Would you, could you in the dark? He said no. I would not, could not in the dark. Would you, could you? In the rain, I would not, could not in the rain, not in the dark, not on a train, not in a car, not in a tree. I do not like them, Sam, you see. Not in a house, not in a box, not with a mouse, not with a fox. I will not eat them here or there. I do not like them anywhere. You do not like green eggs and ham? I do not like them, Sam, I am. Could you, would you, with a goat? I would not, could not, with a goat. Would you, could you, on a boat? 
I would not, could not, would not, on a boat, will not, will not, with a goat. I will not eat them in the rain. I will not eat them on a train. Not in the dark, not in a tree, not in a car. You let me be. I do not like them in a box. I do not like them with a fox. I will not eat them in a house. I do not like them with a mouse. I do not like them here or there. I do not like them anywhere. I do not like green eggs and ham. I do not like them, Sam I am. You do not like them, so you say. Try them, try them, and you may. Try them, and you may, I say. What do you think? You think he's going to say, Sam, if you will let me be, I will try them. You will see. And there he's trying them. So, I like green eggs and ham. I do. I like them, Sam, I am. And I would eat them in a boat, and I would eat them with a goat. And I will eat them in the rain, and in the dark, and on a train, and in a car, and in a tree. They are so good, so good, you see. So I will eat them in a box, and I will eat them with a fox. And I will eat them in a house, and I will eat them with a mouse. And I will, will eat them here and there, say, I will eat them anywhere. I do so like green eggs and ham. Thank you. Thank you, Sam I am. So what happened in this story? He, at first he said, I don't like them. But then what happened? He ended up liking them. So he changed his mind. Something happened and he changed his mind. And our stories today have that same, somebody thought they knew something and something happened and changed their mind. The story of um, Saul that I read just a few minutes ago. Saul thought he hated Christians. And so he was going to do everything he could to get rid of all of them. But then God talked to him. Jesus talked to him in a bright light. And he realized he didn't know about Jesus. But when he learned about Jesus, he was like, oh, boy, I can do everything that I can to tell people about Jesus, just like Sam. At first he said, I don't like green eggs and ham, but then he tried it. He experienced it. And then all he could talk about then was green eggs and ham. That's like Saul. I don't like Christians. Bright light. Boy, Jesus is amazing. Let me tell everybody about him. Let's pray. Dear God, thank you for being with us. Help us to see you and to spread the news of your great love. In Jesus' name, amen. All righty. I think there are some, su are there suckers in there? Yep, all righty.
today is the third Sunday of Easter. Easter is not just one day, but it's a season, 50 days long, lasting until Pentecost. Jesus has risen from the dead, and his disciples have been convinced that Jesus truly is alive again. However, the disciples still have questions, such as, now what? Jesus had told them during his ministry that he would be arrested, killed, and rise, and all that has happened. But now what? Think back to the beginning of Jesus' ministry. What did he do? He preached, he taught, he healed, he raised people from the dead. He did all sorts of miracles. But he did not do his ministry completely alone. He had called disciples from among those who followed him. These disciples were closer than many of Jesus' other followers. They traveled with him. They had small group tutorial time, and they saw more than the average follower. The average follower fo probably followed Jesus only when he was in their neighborhood, not when he was traveling further throughout around Galilee and other areas. We know that there were at least 12 disciples because 12 are named by name. But we know that there were other unnamed followers. Remember when they tried to replace, when, when they replaced Judas after Jesus' death? Because there, then there were only 11 disciples. They needed to make it 12 again. So they deba debated between Barsabbas or Justice and Matthias. Acts says that these two had accompanied us during all the time that our, the Lord Jesus went in and out among us, beginning from the baptism of John until the day when he was taken up from us. So there were other disciples other than the 12, other followers. And we know that there were women who traveled with Jesus, such as Mary Magdalene and Salome and his mother, and there were others as well. So, what's next for these disciples, these followers of Jesus? Jesus has risen, and he's still teaching them, giving them further instructions. The Peter that we know from during Jesus' ministry time, he is the one that spoke before engaging the brain, the one often with his foot in his mouth up to his hip. He changed after Jesus ascended, he was a spokesperson for the group. He was sometimes jailed, he was beaten because of preaching what Jesus had said. That 180 degree turnaround did not happen all at once. In our gospel lesson for today, we get a tiny glimpse into the teaching that he received from Jesus, preparing him to be a leader of the new sect of Judaism called the Way, which eventually developed into Christianity. In today's lesson, Jesus tells Peter, telling him to feed my lambs, tend my sheep, feed my sheep. These are new instructions, sending him on a new path, giving him a new project. He's receiving a new call, new directions, Jesus is telling him what he will need to do. In our first lesson, Saul is receiving a call from Jesus. He was a Pharisee, a zealous leader in persecuting the church. But as he was on his way to Damascus to arrest the followers of the way so that they could be put on trial and punished to discourage other people from following Jesus and his teachings, Saul encountered Jesus in a bright light and heard a voice speaking to him. Of course, he was frightened, but he followed the directions that he was given. God then spoke to Ananias, a follower of the way, and told him that Saul was waiting for him. Ananias balked, but he went to Saul and told him that God had sent him to him. He touched Saul now called Paul, and he regained his sight, both physically and spiritually. 
He was baptized, and he learned more about this Jesus who he had been persecuting, but now he would be supporting. And he eventually planted new Christian churches around the known world, around the Mediterranean. We receive new calls, too, at various points in our lives. Our first call actually comes through our parents when we are bought, brought to a font and baptized, when we are called child of God. As we grow to school age, we are called to be things like students or musicians or athletes and friends. And as we get even older, we may feel called to specific jobs or vocations. We may be called to be a spouse or a parent. Each of these callings, as well as many others, are unique to each of us. Not everyone is the same. Peter couldn't do the job that Paul did, and Paul couldn't do Peter's job, even though they were both called to follow Christ and to share the good news. Now what? That's a question that we can ask even today. Easter day is over. The eggs and the chocolate bunnies are eaten. Spring is slow in coming. The school year is winding down and summer plans are being made. Now what? What to do next? Continue to come to church when you can. Continue to follow what we have heard and seen from following Jesus. Continue to pray and ask for guidance and discernment for how to live your life, especially if you are in this, a season of change or transition. Continue to trust that God will be with you as God has promised, even if the way is bumpy at times. And continue to respond yes to Jesus' invitation. Follow me. Amen. Please rise as you are able as we sing, I heard the voice of Jesus say. <laughs> Let us confess our faith using the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended to heaven 
get seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Set free from captivity to sin and death, we pray to the God of resurrection for the church, people in need, and all of creation. Holy One of new beginnings, fill us with new life. Send us into the world as you sent your apostles to invite people to come and see your wondrous acts in Christ. Bless Audrey, Aubrey Jordan Knapp and her parents and godparents as she grows in years and wisdom, learning more about you each day. God, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Revive ecosystems that have been devastated by natural and man-made forces. Reestablish plant and animal life that purifies air and water resources and which feed and nourish all living creatures. God, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Accompany laborers and all who are tired, weary, and get little time to rest from their work. Give hope to those who struggle in body, mind, or spirit. Restore all people who cry to you for help, and remember those who are still fighting in Ukraine and other places in the world, and those who have fled. We pray for Jim, Walter, and Brett, and their families and caregivers. And we pray for the family and friends of Stan Guyberg as they mourn his death. Turn their mourning into dancing. Clothe them with joy. God, in, our mer in your mercy, hear our prayer. Join our voices with angels, creatures, and all the saints in praising Christ and bestowing upon him all blessing and honor and glory. Reveal Christ's glory to us and through us in our worship. God, in your mercy, hear our prayer. In your mercy, O God, respond to these prayers and renew us by your life-giving spirit. Through Christ, Jesus Christ, our Savior. Amen. You may be seated as we gather today's offering.
Let us pray. Blessed are you, O God, ruler of heaven and earth. Day by day you shower us with blessings. As you have raised us to new life in Christ, give us glad and generous hearts, ready to praise you and respond to those in need. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. On the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread. He gave thanks, he broke it, and he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. And after supper, he took the cup. He gave thanks, and he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. This cup is the new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sins. Do this for the remembrance of me. Let us be bold to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. You may be seated. We will uh, serve communion today at, at the rail, but uh, you'll come up, receive, and then return to your seats. So it'll be the continuous, but at the rail, the way it has been done in the past. We do have gluten-free wafers if you um, need that uh, instead of the bread. The table is set. All is ready. Please come.
Please rise as you are able. May the body and blood of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ strengthen you and keep you in his grace, now and forever. Amen. Let us pray. We give you thanks, generous God, for in this bread and cup we have tasted the new heaven and earth, where hunger and thirst are no more. Send us from this table as witnesses to the resurrection that through our lives all may know like in Jesus name amen bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face to shine on you and be gracious to you. 
The Lord look upon you with favor and grant you peace. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Alleluia! Christ is risen. Go in peace. Tell what God has done. Thanks be to God.